here with Andrew Clifford, Chief Investment Officer of Platinum Asset Management. Uh, thanks for joining us, Andrew. You guys uh, wrote about uh, China uh, a couple of years ago. And now we're seeing it more and more in the papers that, uh, that it's a media event, the Chinese economy, particularly the, uh, the property market over there, and also some collapses in the shadow banking sector. Can you give us an update on uh, where, where you see China at the moment, and particularly as it relates to Australia? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that, that undoubtedly, you know, China has gone through this, you know, this enormous boom, which has really been centred on investment. And so whether that's been investment in infrastructure, roads, ports, airports, power, generation, um, residential construction, cement plants, steel plants, all the things that go with it. And that's very much been the driving force of, of, of the growth there. And we're clearly, uh, for a number of reasons, coming to the end of that uh, period. Partly, we've, we've got over capacity in many uh, areas. Um, residential property, um, you know, the, the, the government have put brakes on that sector for a good part of the last four or five years, which has slowed it down. And so we are in a, in a, a transition sort of uh, uh, a period for that economy. Um, and that can be quite difficult. And there's obviously uh, been a great reliance on the use of debt. Uh, and, and, and the, um, the shadow banking system has arisen as a result of, you know, the, the government trying to put the brakes on the banking system so, you know, people get around the regulations. Um, so there's no question, difficult times, um, but we need to separate out from that for investors um, what's going on in the stock market because while we fret about it, um, and, and, you know, it, it is one of those things that's in the paper, uh, all the time these days. The fact is that the, the stock market in China, and if we think of all the great financial wipeouts we've had in you know, the last 20, 30 years, whether it is after the tech bubble, uh, the Asian crisis, um, uh, none of them, none of them meet the bear market that we've seen in the price of Chinese shares. The Shanghai index has fallen at a rate of 14% compound uh, for the last six years. And there really is no period in history wow. in major That's markets a big drop. that you've, you've had that. So yes, China's in trouble, but the stock market's already aware of it. And, yes. and the result of that is there are some extraordinary bargains, we believe, uh, in, in the market. So whether we're buying Shanghai Auto, which has joint ventures with Volkswagen and, and General Motors, uh, very strong positions in the auto market there. Uh, six to seven times earnings, a dividend yield of 8%, no debt, lots of cash flow. Um, and interestingly, you know, car sales are actually still growing, you know, quite nicely. Um, we might be a little bit wrong on, on, on the profits of those companies in the next two or three years, but that's a very, very attractive entry price for a strong position business. On the other side though, there's lots of exciting things actually happening outside of that traditional heavy industry and, and it is the internet in China. So we do have uh, this, the, the mobile phone, um, we're going from 3G to 4G only now there. There's this massive boom in, in connectivity to the internet. Um, so we've gone from you know, 2009 to now, you know, less than 200 million people with a broadband connection to 600 on our way to 800 and, yeah, and beyond mm -hmm. that have a connection. And so, Internet, uh, you know, um, e-commerce has gone from non-existent, really, in three years, to being uh, everyone's got a different measure, but probably seven, eight, nine percent of retail sales. And right. and it's the, some of these phenomena are stronger in these emerging countries because people didn't actually have access. If you were living in a third, fourth tier city, you might have had access to certain goods because there wasn't uh, a retail out there providing it. But now the internet gives it to you. Um, so these are very powerful, uh, uh, you know, um, phenomenons, and and there are companies there that we're buying uh, things like uh, Baidu, which is the Google of China, um, Tencent, which is um, you know one of these. Uh, it has numerous things, but at the centre of it is its messaging app WeChat, that really is becoming the centre of people's sort of online uh, mobile online existence. Yeah. Um, and these companies, you know, their, their earnings multiples might look a little high, they're in the 20s mm -hmm. um, in the case of a Baidu, but, you know, the business is growing at 50% per annum yes. um, and we think has some very attractive characteristics in terms of the strength of their franchise. So, 
And a lot of those stocks you're talking about have a common theme, which is uh, based around the Chinese consumer as opposed to um, Chinese construction necessarily. Yes. Uh, am I right in making Yes, making no, that I think uh, uh, absolutely. I think that is that, that is the case, um, and that's where we um, we see um, you know that that what will take over in terms of growing that economy. So it's going to be very different. So for, for the relevance of Australians, the the commodity intensity may actually start to fade a little bit in China. And that's not to say they won't use as much steel each year, they probably will, but they may not grow their consumption of steel yeah. uh, at the, you know, the extraordinary rates of the last 10, 15 years. Instead, you know, there might be a little bit of growth, there might be some years where steel demand goes backwards. Which obviously has implications for the dollar and metal mm -hmm. prices and, and, and the Australian economy yeah. to some extent. So I think China, is, is an interesting place to look for, as an Australian investor because uh, it can potentially harm some aspects of the Australian economy whilst presenting amazing opportunities that you've just talked yeah. about, mm -hmm. such as 200 million to 800 million broadband users. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. Andrew, thanks for your time. Thanks for your insights. Uh, again, you can't just throw a blanket over a region and say it's either good or it's bad. You've really got to scrape the surface yeah. and have a look at what's underneath. So appreciate your time. Yeah, thank you.